Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I just want to do a, a short piece here talking about MX Linux and Antics. And uh, if you remember, like I, I, I'm just releasing now MX Linux 19 beta overview, which is a great distribution. I have no problems with it at all. And I did uh, a few weeks back, I did a video on Antics as well. And near the end of that video, somebody says, you know, these guys have, you know, some, some questionable philosophies. I'm like, well, what do you mean? You know, give me your evidence. And he says, oh, well, just boot that virtual machine back up and have a look at the bookmarks. And as I flipped through the bookmarks, it was a lot of disturbing stuff in the bookmarks. And so on that basis, I said, yeah, you know, maybe Antics, you necessarily probably don't want to necessarily use it as much. You know, it's up to you, of course, of course. Some people said, looked at that and said, well, it's just bookmarks, delete them. And other people said, well, that's not a lot different putting his favorite bookmarks and that is not a lot different than you talking about Christian principles in the middle of your streams. Well, I wanna respond, let's respond to that one first. I actually don't sit there and talk about Christian principles on my streams unless somebody, I answer a question directly in the comments uh, on a live chat or something, I'll bring it up. Never in a planned video uh, do I bring that up outside of maybe mentioning it in passing. I actually save all those for my other channel, which you can find linked in the description here. So if you're interested in that type of topic, I'll answer all those types of questions over there. But what's the difference still uh, in me having those mentions in my video and having those bookmarks in a distribution? Well, it boils down to this. If the distribution specifically said, hey, we're an anti-Zionist Linux distribution, hey, have at it. I'm not going to stop you. Um, I might even review you. I might give you your my thoughts on your distribution as a whole. I'm going to pull in an example here from long ago that's not maintained anymore, but there was, uh, back in Ubuntu 12 era, there was an Ubuntu Christian edition. I would fully anticipate if I install the Ubuntu Christian edition to have something related to Christianity. They had some wallpapers with Bible verses. They had a few Bible software installed by default, things like that. Not a lot of other changes. I would anticipate such a thing because it builds itself. Likewise, there was a Ubuntu Satanic edition which really wasn't a distribution as much as a theme. Um, in fact, the Christian distribution really was a theme plus a few applications. But your Satanic Edition just had a series of themes that were upon a more Satanic trend. Um, you know, pentagrams and demony things and dark colors and reds. I would, if I were to boot this guy up and sit there and bashing on it because it has all these types of things, I'm the idiot because um, it's targeted towards an audience who apparently liked it and, you know, wanted the audience enough to build the Satanic Edition. I don't have a problem. Um, and I'd boot it up and say, oh, okay, my only real criticism here is it's not really a distro. It's just a theme pack on top of a distro, you know. Um, in which case, I, I wouldn't have any right to argue or complain or yell or whine or cry because I downloaded something that geared itself towards a theme. The problem that I had with Antics in that is that Antics itself is not specifically designed for any target group. It bills itself as a distro. Now, some people have said, well, if you actually you know, follow this individual user, the user is quite radical in these areas and it would, should be, quote, obvious. Well, there's a problem with that. Number one, I actually don't care where these viewpoints are. I don't have a problem with it at all. I don't have a problem with the fact that if he wanted to write a distribution and say, this is my distribution and there's things in here that are tied to me that in my views, whatever those views are, again, no problem. But nowhere on Antique site that I am aware of has that. It's just, hey, it's, it's a Debian-based Linux without system D. You install it. And then the greatest argument that I've seen against that issue is that if somebody didn't know that, maybe they were a, a Jewish person, maybe a Jewish person at a, uh, at a business or conference, they're like, hey, let's install this because it seems to work really well with these old computers. It's going to save us a lot of money. And then they go into a boardroom. It's like, oh, that was in my bookmarkers. They open it up and this person has all of these anti-Zionist bookmarks. That's not going to bode well. 
and there was no expectation that such material would be in the operating system itself. So while I understand that, yeah, it's just a bunch of bookmarks you can delete, they're put in here and not explained in such a way. If Antics simply got rid of those bookmarks or said on the front, hey, we are an anti-Zionist philosophy developers and that is expressed in our distribution right on the front on the downloads page, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. I would still review it on the merit of its distribution itself. That's why I wanted to mention that at the end of that antics video. So what are, like, why am I in MX and antics? What do you mean? Well, because the MX team and the antics team, there are, there's a lot of crossover in their development. So some people say, well, you know, antics is like that. So MX is like that. So let's just boycott it all. I mean, we're in, we're in cancel culture, right? Cancel antics, cancel. I didn't say cancel antics. I had a problem with the fact that Antics had disturbing bookmarks in it for certain people. If they wanted to say, hey, this is it, the bookmarks are in here, this is what it is, that's a completely different story. I completely support your freedom of speech of writing a, uh, a distribution which has that. That's okay. Just make sure that that's known. So I did check through when I just did the MX Linux and there are no such things. Yes, there's links back to the Antics websites. I don't have a problem with that. There's just a few bookmarks, nothing is in there. It's not the level of things that were in the Antics bookmarks on the install that a person may not actually know about until they actually boot in there and then they could get a little bit concerned. So do I have a problem with MX Linux because they have the same team? No, because I'm not into this soft, ooh, you've hurt me, you offended me, so die for life. I'm not into that kind of garbage. I judge things on the bare, uh, merits of that. what it is. I'm a meritocracist, sorry, but I believe in meritocracy. The fact is MX Linux is a great distribution. I don't care what their developers have. I don't care if they you know, like or dislike certain groups of people. As long as they're not out engaging and hurting certain groups of people, I don't care. It doesn't matter. So MX Linux is absolutely on my recommendation list. I don't care who the developers happen to be. Antics Linux? Mm, probably not on my recommendation list as long as those bookmarks persist. Unless they come out and say, hey, there's a bunch of this type of stuff that's in this distribution because these are what were the developers and these are the things. And let me give you another perfect example is that the head developer behind Linux Mint, my favorite distribution, has some political views that some people may or may not find offensive and I'm not tipping my cards one way or the other. But the fact of the matter is none of that shows up in the Linux Mint distribution. Well, likewise, none of that shows up in MX Linux, but that stuff does show up in Antics. That's why I wanted to talk about these challenges. So it's not the fact that, ooh, the developers have this viewpoint. Uh-uh. It has to do with what have the developers put into this distribution. I don't care who you are making it. You could be, you know, Hitler and Stalin resurrected from the dead, coming back as zombies, developing a Linux distribution. As long as your Linux distribution works and has decent merit, I don't care if you, you know, who you are if you created it. All I care about is we're gonna look at it, we're gonna look at it on its merits and suggest is this something we can use or is this something that we can't use. Now the great thing about Linux and uh, the fact that it's so fragmented, some people don't like, but I think it's a great thing because if Antics does, it has these things in there that, that certain people may not wanna have, you know, there's a hundred thousand other options to pick from, just go find one that you like. But people like me, we like spinning up these different distributions. We like showing what the options are in the pros and in the cons. So that's kind of why I wanted to mention this uh, this video in this thought. So let me know what you guys think. Is it a serious problem that Antics had some bookmarks in it? Should Antics display well on the site, hey, these are our views and you will find these views in here, whatever those views are, or is it okay as it is? And hey, just delete the bookmarkers. That's okay as well. Um, does MX Linux take the better approach or Linux Mint, who also has a head developer with some controversial views, as long as it does not remain in the distribution? Let me know your thoughts and your comments to all of these items in the comments down below.